Well, welcome to this short look at how uh, you can loop a simulation in Houdini. And this tutorial arises from a question that was put on one of the Vimeo videos about how one could go about doing this. And obviously there are several methods you could use. Uh, in particular, you could use compositing to trick the eye into thinking that you have a continuous loop of flame when in fact uh, you're blending two different simulations. Uh, but what I wanted to do is demonstrate how you could do it in Houdini directly. So what we've got here is just a, an absolutely standard pyro simulation and what I'm doing here is using the flames preset on a sphere and it's just creating this this simulation of some flames rising up and what we want to do is create a loop uh, which will allow us to make the flames look like they're on a, on a continuous loop. So uh, there are a couple of preliminary steps I'm going to do before getting into this, one of which is to turn off the resize container here in my pyro simulation. Uh, resizing the container can sometimes confuse uh, the blending nodes that we're going to use later on, so it'll work much more neatly if we just keep our container uh, at a fixed size. The next thing I'm going to do is to cache out my simulation. And in order to get a loop, I want my simulation to have reached a more or less steady state. So it's no good caching out this first bit of the simulation where the flame is expanding and growing up, because it'll be quite obvious when you cut back that that's the start of the simulation as opposed to the more mature flame, is la flame of later on. So I would think that we could probably start from say frame 70 uh, and carry on. Let's do 60 frames. We, we could do any a loop of any length we like. Uh, I'm just going to use 60 here to demonstrate how it's done. So uh, let us uh, cache that out. Uh, what we can do is do that here in this import pyro build node and as you know this contains two nodes one of which just imports the visualization of your simulation the other one here the import pyro fields node is actually importing the fields that are needed for rendering and it's this that we're going to be interested in so in fact i've already created a cache directory here and there are some files cached out um, so i'm going to use this name and I'm going to cache out from frame 70 to frame 130, so that's 60 frames. So let me click render on this, and this will cache this simulation out to disk. And I'm going to pause the video while it does that. Well, that's uh, cached out, so let's now re-import it. So I'm going to turn off the display of our pyro fields. And I'm also going to turn off the display of our sphere and I'm going to lay down a new geometry container uh, and let's call this uh, import flame and then let's point the file node at these uh, import fields that we've just cached out and because I'm at frame 74 so I'm between frame 70 and frame 130 we've, we've got something here if I was back at frame 1, as you can see, it would give us an error because we haven't cached out the data for frame 1. So what am I going to do to loop this? Uh, well, at its, very, at its most primitive level, I can use something called a time shift. And all a time shift does, and this is explained in more detail in my series of videos on time, is take the current frame and do something with it, add something to it, take something away and then evaluate this node as if the frame was whatever's been calculated here. So the first thing uh, that we need to do is make a loop and we can do that using the modulus operation. So let's use the percentage sign which is the modulus operation in expression language and 60. So that's going to mean that it's going to start at frame 1 and when it gets to frame 60 it's going to go back to 0 and every time it reaches the 60th frame, it's going to go back to zero again. So it's going to loop round. Now don't 
don't look at the nodes but have a look at this frame value as we go through and we can see frame 28 it's 28 frame 46 it's 46 frame 56 it's 56 but as I step through here a second so at frame 58 it's 58 59 then it goes back to zero fine well the other thing that I need to do obviously is add 70 to this because our cache frames start from 70 and finish at 120. So we should now see something because this is now fetching this which is evaluating to 71. So it's fetching same 71 from file and we have actually cached that out. So now what we should see is this goes up then it jumps. So at frame about around frame 60 we're going to see this jump there we go as it loops back and obviously that's going to if we can't get rid of that that's going to create a problem because our loop will be will be quite obvious and one way to get rid of it is to duplicate this time shift node here and instead of using dollar f use dollar f plus half of whatever your loop length is. So in this case our loop length is 30 frames, 60 frames rather, so I'm going to have $f plus 30. So let me stick some more brackets around that. Oops. Like so. So this is going to evaluate initially when we're at frame 1. This is going to evaluate to frame 30, 60, 100. It's going to evaluate to frame 100 and then it's going to loop round like this and its jump is going to occur at about frame 30 as we can see. So what we now need to do is find a way of blending between these two offset simulations in a way which makes that jump, that join, invisible. And fortunately there's a node in Houdini that allows us to do that and it's called the blend shapes node and let's lay one down and connect both of our simulations like so and the blend shapes node uh, allows us to let's just take blend position and differencing off and in fact we put differencing back on, apologies, and what we want is at frame uh, 1 uh, we want to use entirely this second simulation uh, and the reason we want to do that is because that simulation at frame 1 is about halfway through so there's no jump there whereas this between frame 59, 60 and 1 and so on is jumping between one and the next. So at frame 1 we want to keyframe this blend value to 1 so that it's only collecting the second simulation. So we can see we can see as we uh, change this, let me just check Ah, the reason nothing's happening is because the key thing we need to enable is this blend voxel data tick box here and that converts this blend shapes node into something which can blend between two volumes or sets of volume data. So now we should find as we change this we can see it moves between one and the other simulation. So as I said at frame one we want this to have a value of one so that we're uh, collecting entirely from this this simulation here and similarly at the end of the loop at 59 we want this to be 1 as well so let's again out left click to set a keyframe so at frame 1 and at frame uh, 59 that's going to have a value of 1 but at frame 30 which is where this second simulation has its loop uh, we want this to be 0 so we're just drawing on the first simulation so let's just have that as zero. Uh, and what we should uh, now find, let me see whether this is working, is that 
we get no gap. However, it's going to start jumping again here at around frame 100. And the reason it's doing that, of course, is because we've only keyframed the first 59 frames. So after that, it's not going to do that nice blending. So what we need to do is loop uh, these round, cycle these, so that they continuously go through that cycle of 59 frames with the same keyframes. And we can do that in several ways. Uh, the way I'm going to do is to use motion effects cycle. And if we have a look at this, and you may not be able to see it all on the video, there we are, we can see that what this has done is taken our keyframes and just repeated it ad infinitum along our entire timeline. And that's overridden this blend one control. So we should now see that this is smoothly blending between the two simulations to create a continuous far effect. And obviously what you would then do is say render out frame uh, you could render out frame 1 to 60 or you could render out frame 15 uh, 30 rather to 90 or whatever and get a continuous range of frames which you would be able to loop. And indeed what I'm going to do is leave at the end of the video a sequence which shows you what a, a looped uh, set of flame uh, flames would look like. So that's a basic introduction on to how to produce that sort of looped simulation effect in Houdini.